Hi guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to take a look at the new HX850 from Corsair. But is it just the HX eyes without link? That's what I thought. So, quick few points on the outside of the box. 80 plus platinum certified, 100% all Japanese 105 degrees Celsius capacitors. Zero RPM mode, which basically does mean, just in case you're worried, that the fan will not run until it's either up to a specific load or a specific temperature. If your fan's not spinning, don't worry about it. The one thing that I will say is, uh, as I'll show you in a minute, they've not got a te fan test mode, which is basically what we would call the calm down mode, so that you know that it's actually working on this. So we'll see, but you just need to get used to the fact it's probably hardly ever going to spin. Um, I run um, uh, an RM, which basically uses the same fan profile, and even when I'm rendering videos, my fan doesn't spin. So it's just one of those things. Um, and it says it's got superior voltage regulation and long-term reliability, but the most standout thing for me is the fact that you now get a 10-year warranty. I mean, that is monstrous, and it certainly shows how much confidence they have in the product. Um, 80 plus platinum, we've already said that. I've got the HX850. Um, there is uh, the HXIs, which are slightly different. And I will talk to you about that a bit more in the conclusion when I can talk to you about that better. But the, the basic side of it is this one doesn't have link. Um, so there's the basic side of it, but there's a few differences with cables and that sort of stuff as well. So inside the box, you get your power cable, you get a uh, case badge for you to hide subtly somewhere, uh, power supply screws, some um, zip tie cables for you to be able to tidy them up, your manuals and your warranty and all that sort of stuff. Then the cables themselves, they're type four cables, which basically means they are the cables with the capacitors in the end. And if you did want to get yourself some of the Corsair aftermarket cables, because they do do them in many colours, and I can show you better by showing you there's a load up there. I'll put the link to my video um, underneath because I've done all the cables, but they do, um, you've got white there, you've got red, there's blue, they do mixed blue and black, they do white and black, they do black and red. There's loads of different colours. The only reason why I've got them up there is just so that um, uh, they're in shot so that I can show you on days like today. But the standard cables are all black, start to finish. You've got the braid over the top, they're just fairly standard coarse air cables. You've got the big heat shrink because there are capacitors underneath. And like I said, they're type four cables. So if you did want to buy the aftermarket cables, look for the type four and you can get the ones that are basically for the um, RMI or the RMX or, and then um, what I'll also do is underneath, I've got a fairly uh, handy guide underneath so you can work out what cables that you need. And um, uh, this is something that isn't on the Corsair website yet, but will be. So it's kind of a hidden link for the minute, but it's very handy if you're confused about what cables that you need. And then the only other thing that I need to talk to you about is cable wise. I didn't show you on the box, but you've got your ATX cable and then you can go through and you can see how many you've got two of the eight pin CPUs, but they split four plus four. You've got, um, six PCI Express cables, SATA cables, you know I mean? You've got all the details there that you could need and that's what comes in the box. Some of the cables like the um, SATAs and the Molexes don't have the, the braid on, but the 24 pin, the eight pin and the PCI Express cables do. So after showing you the cables on the shelf, I thought it might be a nice touch if I use them for the actual review so that you can see them. Now, obviously they're in my power supply tester, so they're not um, like the tidiest in the world at the moment. And you do get some, when the camera focuses, you do get some cable comb, so you can tidy them all up. But they are the really nice, soft paracord braid, and you can get them in a range of colors. Just go on the website and you can find them. Like I said, if, you, if you're not sure what ones to get, look for the RMI, or the RMX kits, and it's the type four that you need. It is, if I just show you quickly, 
written on the side of the cables anyway, but the website isn't clearly showing what you need for the new HX yet. So don't get confused with the old HX cables. Now we can turn the power supply tester on and the fans all kick in and it all starts to go a bit nuts. But what I've done, and I will do my amazing editing not as we work along. So what I have done is I have set up um, a 20% load, a 50% load, and a 100% load for me to show you. And I'll just move the camera and I'll show you between our results. So what I can do is I can turn everything on, flick this over. So we're on 20% now, which is 170 watts. I know it's flicking and going like a madman, but um, that's just because of the refresh rate and I actually can't get the camera to sync up with this panel. My uh, mobile goes absolutely nuts as well. But this here is our efficiency. So we've got 91.3%, 91. I took a record of 91 dead, but it does go up and down a little bit. So I've taken 91 for my reading on this. It, I might even change it now to 91.4. This is what I mean. As they warm up and stuff, these can, change a few points either way. Now I've done all of my testing before this video so I'm going to go with 91.4 now just because it's being annoying and showing me up. I think you just saw a 91.9 then as well. Anyways for 20% this is doing really well and then up here you can see this is our ripple and the ripple that I uh, recorded was 5.6 as a maximum. You can see it's 5 now, 5.2, 5.4, you've just gone up to 5.6. Spends most of the time around 5, 5.2, but 5.6 was the worst one. Now I wonder if I'll be able to do, oh yeah, I will. Right, so flick of a switch, bosh, 425 watts load, 50%. I've taken uh, a reading of 92.6 for this, although you may see it flash up a tiny little bit, flash down a tiny little bit. And then when we move back up, the top reading is the one that we want to be looking at. And I took my uh, reading of 6.8, but again, it's been quite annoying and I just saw a 7.2 there. And this is one of the reasons why it's quite difficult for me to be able to not give you the results that I see on the camera, because they do change a bit. But I'm gonna change my, um, uh, my notes now to 7.2, because I have seen it. Anyway. The joys, the joys. There's people chuckling at this. There's also other people wincing. Anyway, right, so with a smack of a button, 849 point something uh, watts load. Now I'm not quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is go on to the amps and I'm going to turn them up a little bit. And then if I come back over here, still not quite enough. Okay, so we're now on 850 dead. Oh yeah! Anyone I think I knew what I was doing. Anyway, what we can also see from this is 90, well it's saying 90.7 there. I've taken my reading of 90.6, because you can also see it going down a little bit to 90.5 there, just flickering. So it's, it's kind of dancing around all over the place and it will be doing that as the wattage is kind of fluctuating a little bit there. But what we can do when we pull ourselves up is we can see our ripple there. Now I've taken my reading as 9.6, but I've just seen 10. Why is it with this today? I don't like this stuff. I think it's because the room is getting warmer, um, but it is really quite warm in here at the moment. Um, I've had the, uh, the air con on to keep it at 20 degrees, but we're currently pushing 24 because I've turned the air con off. So it might just be because it's getting a little bit warmer. The reason why I do 20 degrees is I test all my power supplies at 20 degrees. Um, but anyway, you can see that you can get marginal little bits of difference. What we can see up here is it's spending most of its time around the kind of 9.2. Oh, now it's gone to 10.2, lovely. Anyway. The joys of uh, doing this live on camera. So that is my Sun Moon power supply tester. I've brought it in here so I can do it in the filming room and all that sort of stuff. But 
That is our testing. I will get them in the graphs and I will talk to them about, talk to them with you next. Okay then, so when we move on to looking at the graphs, this is really the best way I've got of being able to visualize the differences between the power supplies that I have tested. They may not, may not be many, but we've got a few brands in here and it does give us something to talk about. But the main thing that we can do in this graph is we can compare it to the older HXI power supply because I have tested the 1000 watt one. It's the closest I've got to the 850. So on the efficiency side of things, we can actually see that it's slightly worse than the older one. You've got uh, at 50%, you've got 92.9% on the older one. And then on the newer one, it's 926 so it is slightly less efficient, but it is just 0.3%. So there's not a massive amount in it. But when we move on to the ripple side of things, there is a much bigger difference in the favor of the uh, new unit. So we at 50% load, we got 7.2 um, millivolts of ripple on the, the new power supply. And on the older one, it was 12.8, which again, is not a massive amount of difference, but 100% load, it goes from just 10 millivolts of ripple on this one. But then it, on the older one, it was 23 millivolts of ripple. Now, just to kind of verbalize how I would swing when it came to either efficiency or ripple, if you said to me, you can have a gold rated power supply uh, with next to no ripple, or you can have a platinum or a titanium amount uh, of efficiency power supply with an acceptable, you know, ATX kind of acceptable amount of ripple, I would go for the slightly less efficient one with the much less ripple. Because it's the ripple and it's those fluctuations in the electricity that's being delivered to your components that if it is too much, it can start to degrade or even kill your components. Now at these kind of levels, you're not really kind of having to overthink matters too much. But as a reviewer, we do have to pick between the two and the work that they've done on cleaning up the, the, the way that the um, electricity or the, you know, the voltages, however you wanna put it, is delivered into your kit with the newer power supplies is just amazing. They've come quite far in quite a short period of time really. And the difference has been the, the added capacitors really on the end of the cables, but they have been doing a lot of work in the units themselves as well. So that 0.3% uh, difference in the efficiency hasn't made any great massive amount of difference with like massive amounts of heat coming out the back or anything like that. The fan will hardly ever spin and that's the best way that I can put it for you. I actually left this for 90 minutes pulling 425 watts load in a room that was 28 degrees. That was in the evening as well. And it got to the point that I didn't like how warm my power supply tester was getting. So I ended up turning it off. But throughout that whole period, the fan on the unit never run. The only time I ever managed to actually get it to run was by turning it up to 850 watts load and then it instantly turned itself on. I'm not sure whether it's uh, that was being kicked in by a load setting or not, because it certainly never got warm enough to make the fan turn on. Um, and to be honest with you, sometimes I abuse them off camera to try and make them trip up. So I actually tried this with a hairdryer blowing in the top at 425 watts load, and it still, it took a good 10 minutes of absolute abuse before that fan come on. So that's how, you know, crazy good they've got. So, although please don't, Tell Corset, oh yeah, probably not the best place to have told you, but you get what I'm trying to do. This is the kind of things that, you know, go through my mind at times, so I wanted to have a play with it. So the long and short of it is, I came into this expecting to have a power supply delivered that was the old one without link, and um, I was quite surprised to find out it wasn't that clear cut at all. That It is electrically, or at least performance electrically, it's much better. But we've also got 100% um, 105 degrees Celsius Japanese capacitors right the way through um, the unit now. And the only real thing that I could say that I think it's missing, and it's not that I think it's missing, but it's just something that I've come, I've got used to seeing on Corsair power supplies. And that's uh, some of the older ones did have a button to test the fan. But I do understand that that was just so they stopped getting RMAs from people saying that their fans didn't work when they clearly did. It was just that they hardly ever run. 
So uh, it's just something I'm bringing up that's not there anymore and I had got kind of used to doing, you know, kind of used to seeing it. Uh, on hot days sometimes I even used to like hold mine on to see if any extra heat or anything came out the back. Um, so it's something that I have used, but it's also something I can see is not particularly needed. So the long and short of it really is, I'm gonna give it the OC3D uh, approved award. There's, I've got absolutely nothing bad to say about the unit at all, um, but it is for those of you that don't particularly want Link. Now, one of the weird things I would say is if you were saying to me, would you buy the, the older HXI with Link or would you buy the new HXI without? If you were to put that choice in front of me, I would miss Link as a reviewer because I like to be able to go in and see and that's how I record my, um, uh, my power usage in and out and all that sort of stuff. But if I was advising one of you guys what to get for a rig for yourself and you don't really care about that sort of thing, you just want a power supply to fit and forget, then I would definitely choose the newer one and it's a bit cheaper as well. So it's kind of a win-win. It performs better and compared to the ones with Link, it's cheaper as well. So there's no real bad kind of points to say about it. And you've also got those customizing options and if you do want to get the aftermarket Corsair cables, you just need to remember to get the Type 4 Gen 3 ones, but I will put a link underneath that I've managed to get from Johnny Guru um, so that you can try and visualize what sort of cables that you might need for the other brands. Because loads of people always come to me and go, will these cables fit on a different brand power supply and that sort of thing? And sadly, you know, they won't. But Corsair do have a really nice graph now so you can see what cables that you need. But these, like I've said, uh, Type 4, Gen 3, you just need to go and look for the ones that are on the website at the moment, they're still kind of listing them as being RMI or RMX power supply cables, but you can use them for the new HXs as well. Hopefully the website will get sorted fairly quickly and I have let them know about it as well. Um, yes, putting my, oh yes, ego hat on, but uh, anyways. Thank you for sitting through my power supply video. I know it's not for everyone and I know I do ramble on and I know by showing you the actual testing it takes a little bit longer, but I hope some of you found it interesting. For now at least, with the OC3D approved award winning Corsair HX 850 power supply, this has been Tiny Tom Logan that has filmed this lots and lots and lots because his, uh, his microphone battery decided to die out.